Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. Sometimes you only want a macro action to run based on whether or not some other value has been specified in the program. A conditional macro can accomplish this. The macro will only run specified actions when a specified condition has been met. Now often, conditional macros are used to evaluate the specific option selected within an option group control in the form, although they can also evaluate the values of drop-downs or text boxes or any other controls. Now option group controls are just special logical controls that are used in forms to return a numeric value when a specific selection has been made from within the option group. You can add an option group control into a form in Design View by simply clicking the Option Group Control in the Controls group on the Design tab of the Form Design Tools Contextual tab in the ribbon. Next, click and drag over the area in the form where you would like the option group to be placed. If you have the Use Control Wizards button selected, then the Option Group Wizard will appear. You use this wizard to set the options from which the user can choose in the option group. Whatever choice is made returns a number value, which is the value of the option group. You can then easily use your expression builder when you're creating a conditional macro to evaluate which option has been selected from within the group and set the actions of the macro accordingly. So let's say we wanted to give them an option of opening the shipper list or the supplier list forms by selecting an option and then clicking the button. So we would give the options labels. So shipper list and supplier list. Then we would click next to continue. You can make one the default choice or say no you don't want a default. And then you assign each one a numeric value. Click next. Set the display and appearance of the actual option group. Click next and you give it a caption. So it's going to call it frame 9, but we can put in a different caption. Click Finish. And you can see it adds it as a control into our form. And we'll just change our button text. And now we have the option group in the form. Now we just need to create a conditional macro that can evaluate which option has been selected and open the appropriate form. Now you can create an embedded macro in the form by clicking on the button, clicking the event tab, choosing your desired event, usually on click, and then clicking the expression builder button. If we choose the macro builder and click OK, it opens up the macro window. Now you can add conditions to macro actions by clicking the Conditions button in the Show Hide group on the Design tab of the Macro Tools Contextual tab in the ribbon when you have your macro open in Design View. Doing that will insert a new Conditions column where you can insert a condition that, if evaluated to true when the macro is run, will cause the macro to perform the associated action to the right. And you can either type your own expression into the Condition column or, more easily, you can click the Builder button in the Tools group on the Design tab of the Macro Tools Contextual tab in the ribbon in order to open the Expression Builder dialog box. You can then use the Expression Builder dialog box to assist you in creating your condition if necessary. And ensure that the condition that you create is placed next to the desired action or set of actions in the Design view. Then, when the macro is activated, it will only perform the action if the condition specified is true. So we want to evaluate whether the frame that we put into the form that's currently loaded is actually going to evaluate to a 1 or a 2, which are the numeric options we assigned them. So we can select the forms from the Expression Builder, choose the loaded forms, and when we select the currently loaded form, we can see the different objects. So we want frame 9 and the value. Give that a double click to insert it. And when that object is equal to 1, click OK. 
then we want the action to open form. And the form we want to open is the shipper list in form view, normal window mode. At that point, we can just copy paste and change the option since we know the reference to the object now. So I used a keyboard shortcut to do that. And then once again, specify the action to take if the option evaluates to 2, meaning the second option was selected. In this case, we're going to open up the suppliers list. Once again, in form view, normal window mode. When you're done making your conditional macro, just click the close button to update the property. And then you should be able to test your form to see if it works. And so that's an example of setting conditional macros to evaluate program settings, whether it's evaluating the value of a drop-down, or in this case, an option group, or text boxes, or many other different objects within the database. So conditional macros can be very useful. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.